It's Platt, and today I show you how to make homemade hard seltzer. So let's go. Alright, so if you're a regular viewer to the channel, a while back I did a video where I made hard seltzer uh, with a kit. You can go back and look for that video. Turned out real nice, it's about as simple as you can make. And, um, you know, something even a beginning home brewer could do. Well, I thought, let's see if we can make it even simpler, easier, cheaper, what have you. Because uh, sometimes I know, uh, I get comments in some of the videos that people live in different areas that may not be able to order this or that, or don't have a home brew supply nearby, or whatever. So today I thought we would make something that I'm pretty sure most people can find the stuff to make or whatever. And so we're going to make... Uh, like I said, homemade hard seltzer. Now, what are we going to use? Um, in the video with the kit, we got dextrose, which is powdered corn sugar. Now, you can find it, especially if you have a homebrew shop, or but not everybody has a homebrew shop in their town, what have you. So, what we're going to use instead is light corn syrup. Um, this is something you should be able to find in pretty much any kind of grocery store, big box store, what have you. Now, what is there any difference between corn syrup and dextrose? Uh, well, besides the obvious ones, powdered ones in a syrup slash liquid form, there is some technical difference. Uh, dextrose is uh, chemically similar to glucose. Now, corn syrup is predominantly glucose, but there is a little maltose in it. Also, too, 100% uh, of its mass or volume is not necessarily corn solids or corn sugar solids, which dextrose that is. But for the most part, this is just a, a liquid version of corn sugar uh, compared to the, the powdered form. So this is what we're going to use. Again, this is something you should be able to find no problem. Now to flavor it, um, again, most of these hard seltzers come out clear in flavor, so we're needing a, a, a clear flavoring. And what I found uh, in my local store, and these are, again, something you can easily find in your big box stores, is the Soda, Fla uh, soda Stream Flavor uh, Drops. Uh, this is their Lemon Drops, zero calories, for those of you counting calories out there. Uh, Anyway, we're going to use those so we can maintain a clear uh, product, but yet still have flavor. So this will be a, a lemon-flavored hard seltzer. And then uh, last but not least, we're going to use uh, a Lavalin uh, wine yeast. Actually, I believe that's what came in the hard seltzer kit. Uh, this is just a good uh, quality, clean fermenting wine yeast. Uh, so with that being said, first we are going to have to uh, blend in the corn syrup with water. I've already got my sanitizer in the uh, my one gallon fermenter. So with that being said, let's make some homemade hard seltzer. Well, all right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little over a quart of water, heat it up, and we're going to add in our corn syrup. The hot water just makes it easier for the uh, sugar to dissolve in. We're going to use two 16 ounce bottles of light corn syrup. Uh, as far as uh, gravity wise, corn sugar uh, adds roughly about 42 gravity points. Now this is not necessarily by, by mass, 100% corn sugar, there's also a little maltose or whatever. So we'll probably come in a little bit lower than that. Uh, we're still probably going to shoot in the high 1070s to 1080s. We'll have to see how it works out. So this, this will probably become a little higher ABV hard seltzer. You can always adjust. Uh, even if you just use one, again, that should get you around 1040, which should get you into the threes to fours. So you can always adjust that. But I want to talk a little bit about the corn syrup uh, that we're using. Also, note, when you buy corn syrup, some corn syrups will sometimes have vanilla, or some will also use salt. Now, the salt shouldn't have effect, and then the vanilla, to a certain extent, wouldn't have any effect as far as would this ferment or not, but just note that kind of keep an eye out for that. Um, obviously the vanilla would play into some, into the flavor. Um, I guess you want to do like a vanilla cream soda seltzer type thing, then, then that always is an option, but uh, just something to note. 
Well, I'm going to go ahead and add in our corn syrup. And then um, we're going to let this cool down. We'll throw our thing in the Fenrir, and we'll come back to do our gravity check. All right, gang, so it's time to check our starting gravity. Uh, let's see where we come out. Let me get a better spin. Oh, wow. That is a little higher than I'm expecting. We're coming out at 1.090. Uh, just a little guess in my head. We're around 10%. That, and I was saying, you know, around 1070 or so uh, I guess there's more maltose in that than I was expecting uh, in the corn syrup um, that does mildly surprise me but it means more alcohol which I don't think we're afraid of uh, like I said uh, if this comes out a good clean fermentation we're gonna be around 10% uh, alcohol by volume you can again adjust the amount of corn syrup you put in uh, maybe Instead of the two 16 ounce bottles, maybe uh, total, you know, which is 32 ounces, maybe 24 ounces might have been a little more appropriate. But again, we're not afraid of that. And so, what I'm going to do because of that, because we have that's a pretty high gravity and we're going to have a lot of fermentables, I am going to go ahead and uh, add some yeast nutrient to that because uh, we're going to need to give uh, the yeast uh, some help to get through all those fermentables. Luckily, uh, the Lavalin wine yeast that we're going to use for this is, is, uh, is designed to uh, work at higher alcohol or higher gravities. Again, uh, most wines are going to be in the 10 to 15 percent range anyway, so this yeast should be able to handle that, but we're, we're going to give a little extra nutrients. So I'm going to go ahead, pitch the yeast. We will come back in a couple of weeks and see uh, how it came out all right gang so it's been a couple of weeks and we're going to uh, check the gravity on our homemade hard seltzer our original gravity started off at 1090 so let's see where we're at right now and uh-oh it's looking like we didn't get a good reading. We're about 1070, which means we're only a little over 2% alcohol by volume. What happened? Did we uh, screw up again? And the answer is probably not. Uh, this is something I've thought about since the Lifesaver video where I talked about we didn't get a full fermentation and I explained in that video why I thought that didn't work. Uh, this is not the same though. Let me explain why. Uh, our hydrometer basically reads the buoyancy of whatever liquid uh, when during fermentation CO or yeast produces alcohol which is less or uh, which is less buoyant than regular water and so when alcohol is produced the buoyancy of our hydrometer will drop that's where we get that's how we figure out the alcohol is the difference in that buoyancy now, what else happens though in fermentation is that yeast also produces CO2. Now, most of the time it comes out of the airlock, but there are times when the liquid traps the CO2 and all that carbonation is left in the liquid. A good example is in the world of winemaking, for those of you that maybe wine fans out there, uh, you have to degas wine. Usually the starting gravity for commercial wines are really high and that, that liquid starts off pretty thick. And very viscous and that co2 doesn't escape as easily as it does with beer and so a lot of that co2 is trapped and that prevents us from getting an accurate reading on our, our hydrometer uh, we could be you know as much 20 gravity points off well if we were reading 1050 instead of 1070 now we're in the low to mid fives which is about what commercial seltzer sells at so you know then we went from failure to, you know, success. Now, I was kind of expecting a little lower reading. I was expecting to at least get to 7 or so plus ABV. But, um, like I so said, we have to, probably going to have to degas. So let me show you. It might be a little tough to see. It's really hard to tell if there's CO2 in the liquid. But let me take this little turkey baser. 
and see all that gas. Maybe you can hear it in the background. We see all this gas that's trapped in that solution. It's almost like it's already carbonated. Like we, to be honest, we probably wouldn't have to carbonate at this point. So I, I'm kind of glad this happened because again, it's a, another teaching point. Sometimes you might do a hydrometer reading that you know you've seen that the airlock work, the temperature's fine and everything, and you just get the wrong gravity reading. Sometimes, especially with these sugar solutions, you're going to have to trap CO2. So to get a proper reading, you're going to have to degas. Now you could do, you know, this method, you know, here for example, or you could take a spoon or whatever. Uh, degassing a wine sometimes may take a couple of different days, take a while to degas, but Again, to get a proper reading, that's something you'd have to do. Now, where do we go from here as far as our hard seltzer? Since it appears that we did get a somewhat successful fermentation, again, we should probably be in the five-ish range as far as ABV. Technically, you could drink this right now. Don't even worry about flavoring or anything else. Just, you know, go crazy. Um, you could, uh, as far as flavoring goes, I'm going to use the soda stream lemon drops are zero calories roughly a half a teaspoon per liter you've got almost four liters 3.8 liters here so roughly two teaspoon two teaspoons of our uh, flavor drops should do for this now if you wanted to bottle from this point I would caution you because of that co2 trapped I want to add additional sugar in there and this is something I've had to learn the hard way and some home young home brewers out there the same thing if you ever have something called bottle bombs you over carb carbonate something it is an absolute miss and you want to absolutely avoid it so I would suggest if you want it to bottle to either not add any additional sugar and just throw this in and then throw the bottle straight into your refrigerator because again we don't there's still active yeast in there there's still more co2 being produced again you can see how carbonated that that was so we don't want to again ramp up the carbonation too much because you'll have bottle bombs so you could bottle straight from here you could flavor bottle straight from here and then I put it straight in the fridge uh, you could if you wanted to degas this put it in the fridge to kind of drop out all that yeast or whatever and then do whatever with you Either way, you could go, you know, don't go wrong there, but realize, I just wanted to really point out, you've already got carbonation pretty much in there. So don't, I want to, like I said, wouldn't add additional sugar. Now, what am I going to do is the next question, and I'm going to bring back our Warsteiner mini keg. You might remember a month or two back, I reviewed the beer, and I said I had something planned for the keg, and I think this is it. I'm going to do a separate video on how we will disassemble clean this keg and then reuse it to uh, for our homebrew and this is a five liter mini keg we've got four liters here so uh, it'll work out perfect for our example so here in a week or two I'll have another video um, another video showing how to uh, use this uh, use the mini keg and we're going to use our uh, hard seltzer for it well I hope you like this video if you did please subscribe down below also please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out a good product if you have any questions comments concerns please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page till next time bottoms up <laughs>